and then tune it. I tuned it to a chord, okay, to a, a and then just use a, a steel guitar bar. But it, it won't sustain if you don't put the piece. You could almost do it with an ice cream stick, but it's wood. You have to have something metal under here to make it work. Is that what they call the Evo? Yeah. Okay. And other tricks, I, I used to go to a piano. I'd go to the piano to get a really great plectrum sound. I'd put masking tape over the strings. Mm -hmm. And when you play it, you'd sound like a lot of harpsichord sound. Ah. It's a great sound that way. Mm -hmm. But that was the guitar. And on stage, it was hard to duplicate. Uh, when I did it, I wrote it in the strings. So the strings played it along with the guitar because oh, the yeah. guitar couldn't sustain it. Yeah. So that was as close as we could get in, in concert. That's how I heard it in 2003. Yeah, the strings would play that. Yeah. And they make, it, they make it work good. Yeah. But you know, I was, I was conscious of not recording something we couldn't recreate on stage. Because I know, boy, you get out there on stage and you're missing this big important part. Uh, you know, it's not going to sound as good to the audience. They're going to miss that part. Um, so was um, using tapes never an option or sample? Or what's known as sampling now? I never did. Okay. Millie Vanilla did it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something you never, never no, were drawn to? No, because sometimes technically you can run into trouble. It doesn't start when it's supposed to. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but we had strings always, because all so many of the songs had string, and we'd have the string section in the concert. Mm -hmm. If that was, and I, had, I played a few times without them, and I asked people in the audience, I said, did you miss the strings? And they said, no, we just kind of hear it from the record, you know, it wasn't as bad mm -hmm. as I thought it was going to be, but. So, sorry. Sorry. I'm done. Oh, okay. <laughs> That, that led me on to another question. Why didn't you tour with a drummer in 2003 with, with the drum player? Um, that's a good question. Um, what year was that? A, a lot of my solo concerts, um. I didn't take drums. We just had guitar, electric guitar on myself, bass and string. Um, when I looked back at the key songs that the people were coming to hear, the drums did not play a significant part. They were musical, not rhythmical. Mm -hmm. Traveling with drums is a nightmare anyway. And when the drummer starts playing, all the drum sound usually goes over into the violin microphones and the cello microphones, yeah. mm -hmm. and they wipe out the string section. Mm -hmm. And then you try to turn up the strings and you just get more drums. Very hard to isolate the drum. That's why you see all yeah. these big plastic devices around the drummer is to keep his sound out of string mics or other mm -hmm. people's microphones, vocal mics. Um, so that's why I didn't take a drum. Don't need it. It's a headache. Is the concert any good without it? Yeah, uh, I missed it on Guitar Man and you know a couple of the up tempo mm -hmm. songs I missed it. I personally thought I was expecting well the drum the drum intro to come in on Lost Without Your Love. Yeah, that was the good. one where I sort of missed them. But I, I miss, it yeah, I missed them too. Yeah. And I'll tell you another good story about missing drums. Are we here to listen to a couple of stories? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think this was in England. Uh, my drummer at the time was a guy named Jim Gordon, mm -hmm. yeah. who co-wrote Layla mm -hmm. with Eric Clapton. Um, so anyway, during Diary, which was just me and the guitar, Jim would run off stage and smoke. He'd always get back in time for the next song, which is mm -hmm. a big drum song. Have you heard this story? No, no. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I do diary and everything's fine. And I start the guitar on the next song and I wait for that big drum thing. Nothing! I turn around, no Jim, he's not there. About halfway through the song, here he comes. So concert's over, Jim, what happened to you? <laughs> he went off stage, he went out some door. Got locked out, right? And no, but the, the uh, security guard wouldn't let him back in. <laughs> and he said, I'm the drummer. I want the next song you got. Oh, where's your ID? Yeah. 
I mean, that's when backstage passes were invented by that time. And so he couldn't get back out there. That's crazy. So that was in English. Goodbye, girl. Um, half the songs were old songs, and half were they leftover songs, or did you go in and, and write those for the movie? It was from scratch. Actually, the Goodbye Girl, I kind of had started that melody. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about the whole album? Yeah, the whole album. Oh, the whole yeah. album. Yeah, that was sort of a mishmash of yeah. stuff because they were pressing me for, let's get something going quick, you know. I didn't have enough. Yeah, original because the single was the Those are the songs there that um, were new right there. And those were all new for the movie? They weren't written for the movie. No, just no. Goodbye. Just Goodbye Girl. Oh, yeah. so the other ones were leftover songs from your first solo album? No. No, they were new things. Uh, half the album was new songs, and I the think, other half was... I think if I'm yeah. answering your question correctly, uh, Took the Last Train was sure a good song, and that thing should have been a hit. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it was a minor hit, but it should have had a lot better success than it did, I always thought. I'd like that song. Yeah, I think it was it's a pretty... Big regional I think it was too way. slow. I go back and listen to it now. I should have been faster. I should have sped it up. Just to simply turn a dial, make it go. Well, not ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but it just took, it took too long to develop. And, and you know, it's funny when you've recorded something, you go back a year later and listen to it. You have new perspective, mm -hmm. new fresh ears. And I still think that was too slow. I think, well, if I made that a little bit faster, because it had a lot of good stuff in it. And when I went as a solo artist out of when Brett disbanded, Electra didn't quite know what to do, the record company. They didn't know kind of what are we gonna do with this guy? I mean, do we treat it like bread or and they floundered for a while, uh, trying to get my stuff played and find a little niche for me. Uh, I'm not blaming it on them, but I could have used a little more help. Well, I know as, as a music director in Hawaii that the promo singles weren't coming. It was just like we found out, oh, there'd be you know, cash box or billboard. Oh, he's done your record out. Let's get this. Yeah. I, I, I had to go to the record store. I could have journal. used more help. It's the best way I can put it. I think it, it could have been a little more. But then he decided to retire from music and become a cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. Which was fun. <laughs> Any stories about Laura Lee? I'm sorry? These stories about Laura Lee, the song? It's my daughter. Yeah. She liked it. It has a certain feel to it, you know? That's Great. Yeah, isn't it? Kind of like uh, uh, Marina Del Rey or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, it's kind of a jazz rock thing. Yeah. And, uh, like your version of Bob James. That's right. Sample. That's right. Like. Because I love uh, that kind of music. I listen yeah. to it a lot. Um, it's one of our bathroom songs that works. So I tried, it. you know, I, and I was, I was going to get somebody to come play the guitar. I actually played that guitar part on that. Oh, nice. Um, it's not that hard. If you work on it, it's just that octave thing. You just put your fingers in the right place mm -hmm. and just pluck the string. But I was kind of proud because I was going to try to get somebody to do it. And then I thought, well, I'll just try it. it wasn't, it's not like guitar, man. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But that one worked pretty good. And that's Larry Nechtel. I think that's Larry's best solo organ work I've ever heard him do. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was just phenomenal, on fire on that record. I just let it go and go and go and go. As long as he's willing to play, we let the tape go. And I go back and listen to a lot of his stuff that he played. You know, he played the solo on Rockin' Pneumonia and Boogie Rainbow Blue. Uh, what's that? Uh, what's the guy's name? John Rivers. John Rivers. John Rivers. Never paid me the 50 bucks he owes me. <laughs> <laughs> he played that solo and he was quite famous. He probably doesn't have 50 bucks. Rich over trouble yeah. Okay, yeah. that's what he's really known for. He got a Grammy for it. He got a Grammy yeah. for it. But what he did on that Laura Lee record, mm. I thought was some of his. That's his, his arrangement, his whole. He just played the heck out of it. Mm. Larry plays what Larry wants. Oh, yeah, he's, mm. yeah, Larry would. He wanted to play something different every take. He mm. was fanatical. And I'd, I'd say, Larry, the last time you on that practice run, you did this and this and here's, well, I don't remember. I said, yeah, you do, and I'll hum it to him. All right, I'll play it again. And uh, he was so original. He just loved to yeah. do something different every time. What a talent. 
huge. I will tell you, if you'll go listen to uh, a song I did on one of my solo albums called Thanking You Sweet Baby James, okay. he played... I don't think it's on that one. He played some keyboard stuff on that in between my guitar work that was so good. I told him, I said, Larry, some of this stuff's so good, I'm gonna write it into the string parts and some of the other parts with it, and I'm gonna use some of your lines. Uh, he was the best I've ever heard. I mean, if you get him on a record session, he would pick that session up so quick. But Leon gets most of the credit for being the, the great pianist, but I'd take Larry anytime, because mm -hmm. he's a very versatile player. Mm -hmm. The video of yours for life, for uh, Mike Spinatown, Larry, Larry does the harmonica solo. Yeah. yeah. It's so fun to watch. Mike is like trying to get you to laugh kind of thing. It's so cool. Mike was a cut up. I could tell. He was, he was sort of the clown. He was yeah. really fun. And yeah. when we were on, when they were on the world tour, I, I was with them because our kids were all grown by then. So it was Mike's birthday. And he always had a special pair of shoes that he wore on stage, his drummer shoes. Okay. They were like, um, Ballet, almost like a man's ballet shoe, oh, a soft shoe, Capizios. Capizios. Yeah. 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 And so I was going to, I bought this happy birthday, you know, confetti stuff, mm -hmm. and I was going to put him, put it in his drumming shoes, and then I thought, that is not smart, <laughs> because as, as much as Mike enjoys a joke, that would not be funny, because yeah. if he put those shoes on and had to go on, that would not be a cool thing. <laughs> so I put them in his street shoes. Mm -hmm. And then he thought it was hilarious, but I'm so glad I didn't put him in his right. drumming shoes. That would have probably been not a cool thing. Mm. But he was really a funny guy. But he would tell the same joke over and over. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every tour we heard the same joke, <laughs> but we politely listened because he was a good guy. Are you going to share it? Huh? Are you going to 